Hi, this is Shadji and today I'm gonna talk with you and discuss about self-defense. Self-defense is arguably, in my opinion, the most important factor or aspect on why you should go into martial art as a child, as a man, as a woman, as an elderly, self-defense should be your priority. Competing is fun, we go out, we learn a few things, we grow as, a, as people, we may earn a medal, we take some photos and, you know, improve our strategies. But self-defense should always be your main priority. If you don't know self-defense, you don't know jiu-jitsu, as Hickson says. And I'll stand by that. That's why the majority of my training, I feel, should be geared towards self-defense, not just competition and strategies for competition. So, there is this big debate that's always going on in this community or platform. You know, you have Muay Thai is the best martial art. One clean punch or hook or jab or knee and it's over. Jiu Jitsu says, I'll put any guy to sleep no matter how big they are. Judo says, I'll put someone down and pin them and no one gets hurt. You have the boxer, one clean jab and it's over, you know, so on and so forth. The truth is, they all work, you know, just like the electrical engineer, the civil engineer, the mechanical engineer, they're all engineers and we are all martial artists and fighters as long as we spar. And that's the key point, spar. And the truth is, self-defense is far more complicated, you have the psychology and you have who you are as a person going into the fight and we'll um, get to that in a second this video will not be about any discipline will not be about any technique but it would rather be about uh, how to dissect a personality and also the psychology the situation and of self-defense in general picture this you have a big and wide spectrum on one end you have all the techniques you've learned and on the other end you have execution and mental stability and that big gap is or the what separates the two ends of the spectrum is stress fear anxiety of the fight and you have arts that help bridge the gap between the two ends of the spectrum and you have arts that do not we say this art is not good because it doesn't spar why is it okay I'm learning these great techniques but why doesn't it work because I don't spar well it's simple because the sparring or lack of sparring closes the gap between the spec the two ends of the spectrum for example if I'm someone that knows 20 30 40 50 techniques and then I don't spar, I'm not gonna know how will I handle myself against someone who's resisting, so on and so forth. But with Judo, Jiu Jitsu, Boxing, Sambo, Muay Thai, you go in, you know there is four, five minutes or, or however the round is long. And you know, at first when you go in, you're nervous, you're, you're shaking, you don't know what to do. Uh, but then as you go on, you, you do open mats, you go and see your friends, you go and spar all day long, every day. That gap between the two ends of the spectrum narrows and that's what you need for street fight. It's not the amount of techniques, it's that one or two techniques can often be more than enough. So, first of all, you need to spar in order to have a relaxed state of mind in order to be strategic and in order to execute your technique if you do not spar you're always going to be scared you're always going to be wondering what will happen that's why a lot of people who do aikido and left they were always wondering can i defend myself will i when they see something it scares them when when they see an mma fight and imagine themselves in the octagon they get scared or in front of a boxer or muay thai etc but when you spar all that just goes away and all you think about is strategy and how to approach however your discipline allows you to approach and in order to end the fight and that in my opinion is very important the second thing is 
you have everything that happens before the fight now you can spar with your friends etc but once you're used to it it doesn't have its appeal anymore what do i mean by that so you know i'm sure you've had this multiple times you know you're with your friend you're talking you're discussing uh you know you're laughing and then the timer goes on and then you're sparring you're rolling uh he taps you out you tap him out but then when the timer goes off you you become friends again you know very well that you're not in some sort of danger you're not fighting for your life yes it it narrows the gap between the two ends of the spectrum but not entirely you will not know uh how freaky it is or how scary it is until you yourself get into a fight and know how the severity of the situation is and because someone who's out to see seriously injure you is not like your friend who you are rolling with or who you are doing uh stand up randori with in judo it is far different uh but nonetheless judo narrows the gap between the frightened state of mind uh, or someone that knows techniques and the strategy and the cool mind so let's talk about psychology of self-defense self-defense there is so much that goes before the fight uh, let's talk a normal scenario that happens you know you're at a bar it's crowded people are talking it's loud uh, people are having drinks you know you turn around you know it's narrow uh, your elbow knocks off someone's drink and they get mad etc the first thing you need to do is negotiate apologize say hey man i'm sorry uh, the place is too narrow i knocked off your drink here let me get you another one or here let me pick up the check whatever it may be but uh, show good manners negotiate and more often than not people will reciprocate they're gonna be nice they're gonna be like hey it's fine it happens or they accept the drink and uh you know as long as they're not doing anything physical like they might get mad like hey man we, we watch out or something you're not in real danger but unless they're doing like some something extremely physical like just shoving you or getting in your face in your personal space you're not in any real danger yes it is uh, nerve-wracking it, it might get you nervous but not to the point where you're scared and you're panicking as someone just charging at you so the first thing you need to do is just really negotiate stay calm uh, take responsibility even when sometimes you know it's not your fault just say hey you know it's on me I'm sorry you know just we're, we're here to have a good time there's no need to do this let's all go back home happy and you know had a good time but then you have those who are you know just coked up uh, on a gram of trenbolone and they're just out to do damage you know you knock their drinks out and they turn around you know they grab your shirt they pull you towards you towards them and they just want to fight now that in and of itself there's no room for negotiation anymore uh, this is where you need to take action there's no talking you just put them in their place let them know what they're what they're dealing with and also you know just who knows they might attack you immediately and quickly if you just don't react they're gonna think you're passive so on and so forth and that in my opinion is dangerous and this is where the real challenge lies and this is where a uh, person from person would differ for example the psychology of self-defense is not just the intensity within the situation itself but also the characters for example if you are someone that grew up uh, under a lot of parental pressure uh, a terrible school a bad neighborhood you're constantly beaten down uh, your character is broken you're most likely not gonna handle it very well you're probably gonna be very passive uh, and frightened because over the years your character has been broken down to the point where you have no spine unfortunately the second you know there's also that person who's you know extremely pampered that whatever happens some, or something that happens to them or with them you have someone like maybe their older brother family members their parents they come in and they clean their crap up or they take they always you know bail them out that also will not help you in a street fight if you have this type of character where 
you haven't been trained or used to you know handling things yourself and thirdly you have that you know person who's been supported who's been encouraged to do things on their own uh, they have their parents support they brought them up they supported them hence their character is strong and also they had uh, accurate training and you know efficient training that person will most likely handle themselves very well so the psychology of self-defense is goes years and years and years and years before the moment where something happens to you self-defense psychology is as complicated as general psychology and you know like work psychology relationship psychology you know when you're in a relationship most problems happen because of something that happened years ago and it affected you for years and years and years and years uh, same with work same with choosing your partner same with everything self-defense a street fight the same thing who you were brought up as uh, the people you surrounded yourself with while growing up all that stuff will play in the role of you either sticking up to yourself or being passive and cowardly and losing the fight and most likely losing your life in case it was one of those uh, you know uh, back alley late at night where you know five just come out of, of nowhere and they want to do harm I mean yeah that stuff still happens in you know like ghettos etc unless you're living there but if you don't live in a like an area like this you should know that you should not walk at night in those areas so but what I'm trying to say is the psychology of self-defense stretches years and years and years before the moment of that fight the first thing you can do is negotiate you know take responsibility even though it might not be your fault you know uh, be the bigger man as they say and also when things you know just happen and there's no avoiding them you know it's up to you and how you were brought up and your character plays a big role uh, in what's gonna happen like I said you can be someone that's been broken down with no character a weak character a passive character you have someone that's been pampered everything was given to them and uh, whenever they had a problem someone else took care of it and you have someone that's been you know brought up in a healthy household and a healthy way and all that can play a major role in self-defense and how you handle a situation regardless if you know judo jiu-jitsu boxing muay thai aikido whatever all that stuff will play a role but sparring is incredibly important to bridge the gap between technique and execution because you know I can know 200 techniques of Aikido but if I don't spar and something happens and someone is swinging at me in a way that there's no pattern there's no strategy uh, I cannot read them I will not apply any technique because I'm too scared I'm too panicking I'm not used to this particular situation so uh, I was actually gonna do a video about the Gracie challenges because if you look at them these old footage you see that it is incredibly chaotic there's no pattern uh, you see someone for example uh, Conor McGregor versus Alvaro uh, uh, what's his name in the UFC you see them they're they're like very tactical they're striking you can, they draw patterns and through those patterns you draw your strategy in order to counter them but in street fight it's not like that it's uh it's incredibly chaotic it's incredibly random and it's up to you how to control them and i'm gonna very soon play the uh gracie challenge fights the where henner narrates but i'm gonna be narrating i'm gonna tell you about the judo techniques in them but also they're incredibly chaotic and how they handle them is very uh, important and these footage are far more important than MMA because the street fight is gonna be like this I, very recently like a few months back I saw someone go crazy he, he was clearly drunk uh, I saw someone go crazy and he was just lashing out at his friends he even slapped an old man and watching from very far away this happens it freaked me out it freaked it's nothing like uh, like the ring it's nothing like the like the, a boxing ring or like a judo mat it's something incredibly different and we should take note of that and sadly you're not gonna know how you're gonna 
behave in a street fight or how you conduct yourself unless it happens to you so we can talk all day long but the fact is you know when push comes to shove then we will know what we're all about each individual is different so this video in my opinion is important it's a very important discussion to be had because self-defense is not just knowing techniques or you know putting your fingers uh, in their eyes so on and so forth it's about raising up a very strong psychological state and then you add the techniques and helping with your psychological state is sparring because you get rid of all the anxiety all the fear etc and you become far more strategic in very stressful situation and that is important in my opinion for self-defense so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below this was shahadi and thank you for listening